Hello aspirants, I once again welcome you all to Editorial Analysis of Shankar IAS Academy. Now before getting into the newspaper analysis, I have an important announcement for you. The most awaited batch 2 of pre-storming prelims test series 2025 have started on 5th October 2024. Only the orientation has been done, but the test is happening on 19th October 2024. So you can click the link provided in the description to register for the test series and check your preparedness for your preliminary examination. So with this note, let us look at the articles that we are going to discuss today. In this first article, we will be seeing about, in this first article, we will be seeing about a Nobel Prize winner for physics and in the second article, we will be seeing about USCIRF report from the mains perspective. So without any delay, let us get into the first news article discussion. Now look at this news article. The news is that John Hopfield and Jeffrey Hinton both have been awarded with Nobel Prize in Physics for 2024. They have been awarded this prize because of their contribution to artificial intelligence and machine learning and to be very specific their work on artificial neural networks. So in this analysis we are going to see what is this artificial neural network in short called as ANN. See, ANN are nothing but the networks that mimic the functioning of human brain by processing large amount of data and learning through repetition leading to significant advantages in pattern recognition. This is very crucial for tools like facial recognition and image improvement or in simple words we can say that artificial neural network or computational models inspired by the human brain which are used to solve complex problems in artificial intelligence and machine learning. So they actually mimic the way how human brain processes information by using layers of interconnected nodes. In human brain we call it as neurons. Similarly in AI there are layers of interconnected nodes. They will be used to recognize patterns, make decisions and learn from data. So with this basic understanding, now let us quickly go through the components of ANN. See, similar to our neurons, they have three layers, one input layer, then a middle layer and an output layer. In the input layer, specific feature or different variables are provided as input. So input can be multiple of a particular thing. So once the input is done, the middle layer process the input data to multiple layers of neurons. In this particular layer, the hidden layer varies depend upon the complexity of the task and this particular layer applies both the weight and biases to data and passes it to the next layer. So in the outer layer the final result of ANN is, is produced and it shows the and it shows the predicted class of input data. So these are all the components of ANN. Now let us quickly go through the different types of neural network that are currently available. See the first type is the feed forward neural network as the name itself suggests. It is a very simple flow of information will be in unidirectional that is there will be an input and there will be an output and the flow of information is only in a straight direction. Secondly the convolutional neural network. See these networks are specialized for tasks like image recognition. They use convolutional layer to detect pattern and feature in data. For example, our Google Photos, they use this convolutional neural networks. For example, if you search for images that have dogs in it, the CNN, what it does is it goes through all the thousand pictures that you have and it will pick patterns that are similar or contain a dog in a photo. So for doing this filter, the CNN is very helpful. Thirdly, the recurrent neural network. See, these networks are suitable for sequential data like timed series and natural language processing. So any human being, if they talk in their particular natural language, this particular network identifies the language in a particular time frame. They are also made in a form of loop in their architecture this will allow them to remember previous input as well now finally the deep neural network or dnn see dnn or ann with multiple hidden layers these networks are used to solve complex or advanced problems so these are the types of ann now let us quickly go through the applications of ann see as i said earlier firstly it helps in pattern recognition especially it helps in facial recognition it helps in speech recognition and and handwriting recognition secondly cnn are used for detecting objects 
enhancing image quality and performing tasks like medical imaging. Thirdly, RNN and other ANN models are used in language translation, chatbots, speech to text systems and etc. And finally, it helps in predictive analysis. That is, ANN are used in finance for stock market prediction, fraud detection and risk analysis. So, these are the applications of ANN. When we talk about the advantages of ANN, see it is easy to adopt and it can handle complex data. And apart from this, since the neural network are robust and can still perform well even if some neurons are damaged or missing, they are fault tolerant as well. So, these are all certain advantages. However, there are certain disadvantages. For example, ANN, especially the deep neural network that we saw earlier, they require significant computational power and memory to process large database. And secondly, they are mostly black box in nature, meaning the way how they arrive at a decision is unknown. So, this is a very big disadvantage. And thirdly, Effective training of ANN is required for large volume of labeled data which might not be available at the current situation. So, these are all certain disadvantages of this ANN. So, so far we saw about what is this ANN, how it works, what are the components of it, what are the advantages and disadvantages and what are all the types in ANN. So, with these learned points, now let us try to solve a mains question. I will read out the question for you. Artificial neural network ANN has revolutionized fields like pattern recognition and predictive analysis. Critically analyze the advantages and limitations of ANN in modern technology. So, you can write the answer for this particular question and post it in the comment section. So, with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article. Now, look at this news article. This news article discusses the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom, in short called as USCIRF. Report on India released in October 2024. See, this report highlights the deteriorating condition of religious freedom in India by citing incidents of violence against minorities, lynching, arbitrary arrest of religious leaders and the demolition of places of worship. It labels these issues as collapsing religious freedom conditions. So, this is what the article is talking about. So, in this backdrop, let us revise about religious freedom in India from the mains perspective. Before that, let us quickly go through this United States Commission on International Religious Freedom. See, it is a US federal government agency created under 1998 International Religious Freedom Act, in short called as IRFA. It was created to monitor religious freedom globally, particularly in countries other than US. So, what it does is, it assesses countries based on international human rights standards and make recommendations to US State Department, which can lead to the designation of a country as countries of particular concern or CPC, if religious freedom was significantly violated in that particular country. So, this is the background of this US CIRF. Currently, the report published by this organ states that the religious freedom in India is in deteriorating condition. So, here comes the question, what was India's reaction? See, India strongly rejected US CIRF's assessment. It calls the report as politically motivated and dismissed the findings as inaccurate and driven by non-credible sources. So, this is the reaction of our government. So, in this backdrop, let us quickly go through certain provisions in India that are provided in constitution to safeguard religious freedom. See, Article 25 guarantees the freedom of conscience and the right to freely profess, practice and propagate religion, but it is subjected to public order, morality and health. Secondly, Article 26, it provides religious denominations the right to manage its affairs in matters of religion. Thirdly, Article 27, this ensures that no individual can be compelled to pay tax that are specifically meant for the maintenance or promotion of any particular religion. Then we have Article 28, it prohibits religious instruction in educational institution wholly funded by the state. And Article 29, it protects the interest of minorities by ensuring the right to conserve their distinct language, script and culture. And Article 30, 
it gives minority the right to establish and administer educational institution of their choice. Apart from this, we have provision in DPSP as well. Article 44 advocates for uniform civil code or UCC. This is applicable to all citizens for marriage, divorce and inheritance. This promotes a secular and legal framework. Apart from this, there are certain provisions in IPC. For example, section 153A criminalizes promoting enmity between different group on the grounds of religion, race, language or caste. Section 295A penalizes deliberate and malicious act intended to outrage religious feelings by insulting a religion or religious beliefs. Similarly, section 296 penalizes those who voluntarily disturb a religious assembly. Apart from this, there are special acts and provisions like Protection of Place of Worship Act 1991. This prohibits the conversion of any place of worship from one religion to another, ensuring that status of religious places remains as it was on August 15, 1947. Secondly, Religious Institution Prevention of Misuse Act 1988. It prevents the misuse of religious place for political or other unlawful purposes. And there is National Commission for Minorities Act 1992, under which National Commission for Minorities has been established to safeguard the rights of religious minorities and ensure their protection. So, these are all certain special acts and provisions for protecting religious rights in India. Apart from this, there are numerous landmark judicial cases related to religious freedom. Let us quickly go through them one by one. Firstly, in the SR Bombay versus Union of India 1994, in this case, the Supreme Court ruled that the secularism is part of the basic structure of the constitution and the state cannot favor or discriminate against any religion. So, the judgment emphasized the principle of secularism as a key component of Indian constitution. Secondly, in the Shah Bano case, Muslim personal law and the right of maintenance after divorce was the issue. The Supreme Court granted the right to maintenance under section 125 of CPC, which applies to all citizens irrespective of religion. So, this judgment actually sparked a national debate on the balance between the personal religious law and constitutional guarantee and it brought attention to UCC that is Uniform Civil Code. Apart from this, the Ram Janmabhoomi Babri Masjid case in 2019 and Sabarimala Temple Entry case 2018 are certain important cases that discusses about religious freedom in the country. So, so far we saw about USCIRF report what is India's response to it and then we saw what are all the constitutional provisions, what are all the provisions in Indian penal code and what are all the special provisions that have been made to ensure religious freedom in our country. Then we saw certain judgments that reinforced religious freedom and secularism in the country. So with this basic understanding let us try to solve this particular question. Discuss the challenges faced by secularism in India and what is the role of government schemes in protecting secularism in India. You can write the answer for this particular question in the comment section and post it. So, with this we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video, hit like, do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankarai's Academy YouTube channel. Now, thank you so much for listening.